like what's up everybody welcome to the dad johnny podcast with three s's i'm josh fam thanks for joining me today in my video about jess fam you guessed it it's monday i'm back in the real studio this is not a green screen this is what it should look like <laughs> people are like you look sick are you okay you look like you're about to die i'm good it was just the colors and stuff when you key out green screens you lose a bunch of color which sucks so here's me and all my color enjoy sorry Anyway, Jess Fam dropped a Q&A. People are like, you gotta watch, you gotta watch, you gotta watch, you gotta watch it. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna watch it. And I'm gonna snark on it because it's Monday. We got some fun, right? So let's hear what Jess Fam has to say about all her juicy Q&As. Let's go. Okay, if you don't know who Jess Fam is, good. I don't tell you at this point. You're here. You're watching it. You know who she is. But before we get started, I want to show you this video quick. Before we get started, a lot of people were sending me this little clip about Jess Fam. She's like, she's listening to you. I mean, let's hear. But before we get started, everybody's been sending me this clip of Jess. Maybe pickled green for the next few days. Maybe some of you guys will like it better than the yellow. Mm, okay, I see. People are saying. Because we hate that she wears yellow. I don't hate that you wear yellow, Jess Fam. I just... You only wear yellow. That's not, it's just, you know, just saying. I don't wear yellow for the same reason. Yellow only looks good on like three people on earth, okay? And that, it, and those that it does look good on, it looks good on, right? You're like, whoa, yeah, you look good. But for those who doesn't, you're like, ah, oh, well, you're murdering and stuff, okay? So just don't. Anyway, I looked for this video because I had to find this clip, but this video is gone, like they were building, a, 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 an inca an a, 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 an encaps they were building like a case for bugs or for a, 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 an inca a, for more snakes or something I don't know a, 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 an inca a, she owns like bearded dragons and stuff she's a weirdo I went to the pet store the other day and when I was young going to the pet store you never really thought about any of the things you're like oh yeah it's a pet store now you go and you're like I feel sorry for birds. Like, I, I don't know if anybody who has birds, because I know that, Elia, you have Burb, and you rescued Burb. Burb can't fly. If you've got a bird that can't fly and you're rescuing it, I love you. You're amazing. But I just don't know how I feel about taking birds who need to be flying in the wild and putting them in cages. I could be wrong. I'm going to try to offend people. I know I know people and animals that may mimics, and we're, we're good together. I just, the burbs, you know, just let the burbs fly. Sorry. Anyway, she has a bunch of... I think she has one dragon or salamander. I don't know what she has, but it's weird. Okay. Like it's weird. I want to get a turtle though. When I move, when we move, I'm looking for a piece of property, like a big ass. I don't care how far in the country I have to go. I want a piece of property because I want animals that can roam and have fun. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Everly wants a horse. We're not getting Everly a horse. Maybe a mini horse or something really small, but not a horse. Hey, okay? Everly, sorry. But I want a turtle. One of those turtles that lasts for like a hundred years. That can just eat strawberries and all the leftover cabbage and stuff and just do, 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 walks around the neighborhood, you know? One of those turtles is what I want. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Let's go with that. Tyson picked me up a uh, frappe. Thanks, Tyson. Cheers, bruh. Cheers, bruh. Okay, so let's go to this video. I'm sure it's going to be great. Hi, guys. Hi, Hiya. Hi, y'all. Since we talked here, I know I'm looking a little cray right now. Don't worry. I Stop saying the words cray. Like say it if you're having fun. Like that's cray. Like it's you're like being facetious. You're like being silly. But she's saying that like she means it. Like it's part of her vocabulary, and I don't like it. Okay. I really love watching people do chatty style get ready with me type of videos. Do I don't you? think I've ever done one before. So we're gonna do it right. Yeah, I snarked on you and what's her face and the other girls in the bathroom getting ready. So you have done it. And your shirt kept getting higher and higher and people kept smacking people in the ass and someone was taking a piss on a stick and it was just, there was kids with diapers. It was all around, just, mm, mm So you have done it, so, okay. Here, right now, let's light a candle in honor of My favorite thing is when people, like, clap, like, when you're arguing, you're like, ah, 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 and in your face, like, that's, I love it. It's like, I think everybody really likes that as a form of debate. It's a really strong way to argue your point. Really cool that people do that. Actually sponsored by Skylar. Look at their beautiful candle. Okay, it's, it's just like any other candle. It looks like it's in a cup. Cool. Get some. Smells up in her. I actually have this candle in a mini size as well. Bye. Okay. You guys on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, 
what should we talk about? What should we chat about? I know there's a lot of things that people want me to talk about. Some things I'm just not going to, okay? So you said all the questions in the thumbnail. All. So you're lying already? Like, I mean, we're not even half, we're like a minute into the video and you're lied. For shame, you know? I just, what do I expect? I don't want an encounter. Right, Gus? What should I expect? Hey, Gus? Hey, Gussie? Okay, whatever. So, take it for what it is. It's dead, okay? So, I've got all of my makeup. The lighting in my bathroom is not the greatest, so I. Clearly. I moved everything out here <laughs> for some better lighting purposes. That's also failed at that one. PSA, I am not a beauty person, so feel free to watch me and judge me as I go along. <laughs> I will. I will. Okay, should I just get right into it? Let's yes, please. So the very first one is how has life been? Whew. Really quick before I get it. Oh my God. The first question like, Skyler, um, spray shit. Coffee shop in Europe in winter war. Have she been to Europe? And does the coffee shop in Europe smell like vanilla? Why does it smell like coffee shop in the winter in Europe if it's called Vanilla Sky? I'm snowed up in a blanket with a book vibes like <laughs> the <rest> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it smells like <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it smells like nothing that it says in the bottle. Like it smells like I'm walking down a dirt path and I fell down a hill. It smells like your gutters in the winter. It smells like garbage day. It smells like you're packing up all the kids in the car. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese. We get to Chuck E. Cheese and it's like, oh yeah, why did we come to Chuck E. Cheese? That's what it smells like. It smells like yellow nail polish. <laughs> This is actually a really cool brand. It's an Asian American women owned brand. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> How has life been? I don't know. This last year, probably like year and a half, has definitely been the hardest for me, like mentally, for so many reasons. Like obviously I lost two very important people to me and I never experienced loss my entire life. Like I've been getting this question so much of like. Yes, she has. What? Didn't she do like a fundraiser or something for somebody that was like, uh, we should go down that path, but for like her Nana or something like that. And it was like, what'd you do with the money? And then she went all silent about it. Something happened. There's so what? How are you doing? And I don't really know how to answer it because like, I'm just, I'm just doing it. She just says words. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. I've never experienced loss before. You have. You know, like I, I've experienced loss in other ways for sure. Like, you know, losing my husband, like my family, like that kind of loss, but not actually death. So it's been. Has she not? I'm, I know I'm not the Jess fam like, you know, aficionado, but has she not? I thought she did. Very new to me, but I will say overall. Okay, I'm checking her channel. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you guys are going to correct me, I bet. Okay, I could be wrong. It's, it's known to happen. This last year has been a struggle for me, big time. But what do you do? You know, that's life. Remember though, when she was, cause this is what I think it. Remember her and sunburnt crust ass were talking to those teenagers and saying, I lost three people during COVID. So what is she talking about? What is she seeing? That's what I was thinking. You just, you roll with the punches and some things are gonna knock you down and some days are better than others. I take it day by day. I'm just doing my best. I have a lot of people saying that I should talk to a medium. I would be. I would watch that shit. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> They're like, well, it says here, you're going to end up lonely and alone. Yeah, that makes sense. It says here, you're going to have three more baby daddies. It does. Okay, good. I'm, I'm on the right track. The Blair Witch says here that she doesn't like you. Do you think that you and her are like too similar or something? That's really weird. Are you a witch? I'm a medium. I should know this. I'm sorry. sorry. Also says here that yellow's not your color. <laughs> I don't know if this who's saying that. It could be the devil because the devil's trying to deceive. Like, I, I would definitely be down. That's something I would be down for. I just, I don't even know where to even find a medium. Where do you? <laughs> <laughs> Google's your friend. I don't know. How, to, how does that work? Like, I think I would be afraid of, like, finding a phony, you know? Like, how do you know who to trust? How do you know? Yeah. You're afraid of finding a phony, eh? <laughs> how the turntables turneth. Who's legit? Do you guys believe in that? Like, should I? I don't know. Let me know. Be no. Yes. Yes, you should. Yeah, overall, just like the how are you doing? I saw one outside of, when Tyson and I were in Michigan, we saw one outside of a freaking Waffle House. So, they're everywhere. Question, I don't really know how to answer it because it's just, it changes every day and it just kind of depends on the day. She's just how drawing them shits right on. She's just drawing them on. She's drawing the shape of them. Okay. How do you handle dating in regards to your kids? That's a good question. So we asked- None of them are old enough to date. That's how we handle that around here. That's what you should, that's the only answer right here. Lily is what, 11? Not dating when you're, who's dating when they're 11? Dating? 
I mean, you can have your little crushes and all that shit. Dating? <laughs> My daughter, 11. Dad, I want to date. I'm like, oh, that's nice. We're moving to Antarctica. I actually just talked about this on our podcast. We have a co-parenting podcast. If you don't know where we talk about all kinds of things, it's not just co-parenting. We just talk about... It's all a lie. The, the eyebrows are a lie. You know, random things in general. It's called Fantastic Four. But I will sum it up for you guys. As far as dating goes with the kids, I don't feel like there's a certain age that I'm going to allow my kids to date. Like, I don't think that every person develops on the, at the same rate. I think it's more important to talk about communication with your kids than it is to, like, set an age for them. Talk about communication. You did it wrong. It's more important to talk about talking with talking about your kids and talking and communication and stuff. This is the parent. This is this is what she thinks. This is an, a parenting influencer giving other people. <laughs> I think it's more important to talk about talking about talking, you know? No, we don't know what you said there. We don't know. Like, I think I know what I think she means, like, again, which is my major advice for anybody who's got kids is developing the bond so that the lines of communication will always be open. Maybe that's what she's trying to say. To be able to date, they just are all their own people. And although I can't even like wrap my head around that thought right now, I feel like just the way that I've been like parenting them so far is just very open communication. Like It's like very, I don't parent them at all. Like I just, the cameras watch them and I have a just, just fam sign on my wall. The way I parent my kids is I just don't parent them at all. I just let them do whatever they want because if I piss them off, they won't want to be in the videos. And I'm like, I get it. That's how I make my money. So like, you know, the way I parent, it's just parties, drinking, threesomes, putting it on the internet, yelling at their principals, you know, getting fights on Panda Expresses. My parenting style is what I would call chaotic disgustingness. Right? It just it doesn't exist, but it's sort of like I'm there at the, at the place that they live too. We're like roommates more. There's been times where they, I talked about this on the podcast too, like I had one, one of my kids pulled me aside and was like, mama, I really want to tell you something. And they ended up telling me some like, you know, personal things about their feelings. And I was just mind blown. That and I was like, um, next time you come tell me something personal, bring the camera or make sure I'm recording. Now you have to do that all over again so I can put it on the video for everybody to see. You're grounded. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess mind blown, blown isn't the word, but like when it happens to you for the first time, I, I just was like, wow, like I really feel like I'm doing this right. Like my kids came, my kid came straight to me to talk to me about his feelings and his emotions. And so I think I'm going to keep that pace with them. It's just. That's nice. My kid came and talked to me. So I say, you know, I was really mind blown. My kid came and talked to me. It's something I'd ne never experienced before. So I was like, I think I like this. <laughs> I don't think that you're tough. Jess, I don't think that's the flex you think it is. I mean, one of my kids is like probably 11 and they're like finally came and talked to me and I was like, this is nice. <laughs> Are you serious, Jess? Like, talk to me. I'm going to talk you through everything. If you're feeling this way, why do you feel this way? And I just think that it's going to oh, be so yes. different for each of them. And as long as that communication stays like open and very clear, then that's more important to me than... A Did you do your own nails? Set rule for everybody. Like, everybody's just going to be so different. So, I don't know. Thanks. My kids are different, so it's different. Thanks, that's the awesome answer. People ask me that all the time. Like, how are you gonna handle dating when your kids start dating? And it's just like, I really don't know. Like, I'm really just- I don't know because I don't give a shit. As long as videos are rolling in, that's all I care about. She doesn't know. If you don't know this by the time your kids are entering into their tweens, teens and all that stuff, you don't know what you're going to do yet, you've already failed. You need to have a plan put in place, okay? And again, I, I if you want to know my advice on the dating rule, it's just, hey, you're going to make good decisions because I'm going to teach you to make good decisions, to, to find the right people, to surround yourself with the right types of people. If you like a boy, so be it. It is what it is. Okay, but here are the boundaries that you're going to have to put in place for yourself. And here's what your worth is wrapped up in. And I want you to make sure that when you do get into a relationship with a boy or a girl, that your values and your worth are what shines through and that's what they're looking for. So I'm not going to put a set age, but it's definitely not going to be like, you know, it's going to be upwards. So I'm saying I'm not going to be like, yeah, if you're 10, no. Maturity does play a big role in this, but uh, have you met boys that are like 13 and stuff and girls who are 13? Like light years difference.
going with the punches here. Again, I'm just doing my best and I'm taking it day by You're day. Not. Like that. You suck. Your best is garbage. It's just my motto for life in general is things change every single freaking day around here. Like we have so much going on and I'm honestly like, I don't talk about it and I'm missing one product. I am not as open. Oh my God. Is this really what people are asking? To be on the internet and I hate it, honestly. Like I, uh, I have so much I want to talk about and so much that I want to say and there's just, I You've been working on that eyebrow for 10 minutes. One eyebrow. I never expected YouTube or like my career to be the way that it is. I don't know how to explain this, but like being a bigger creator, I've learned a lot about people, like people that are in your life, people, how they treat you. What, okay, what is my point? What, what are you saying? I feel so here's my advice. Like, I, I, it's like the, the things are the stuff and there's like people and they're their own person, right? And I just like, I don't even know what to think about when I think the things that I think. It's like, you know, I'm just like, it's, it is what it is and the things and I don't, like the internet and stuff. And I'm like an influencer and I'm such a big deal or whatever. Right, but I don't even know how to say what I'm saying and saying the things I want to say is just like what here's the thing I'm saying right like I mean like okay <laughs> Did you okay? Does that work for you guys that answer? Okay, like <laughs> Really? Oh my god For the love of god just cut some shit out like I can't share as much as I used to because every word that I say gets Twisted and turned into something that it's not and sorry. Nope. You don't get to say, well, they're twisting. Then come out and say, here's what I said. Here's what that commenter or whatever said about it. And here's what I meant. Okay, because we don't have to. We can tear it apart because you said it on the internet. So imagine that, having to be careful with what you put out there because people like us are watching. And I'm not taking what she's saying and twisting. I'm telling you, I'm showing you what she's saying with her own mouth and eyebrows. And I'm literally just being like, okay, well, you're lying about that because here's the evidence and receipts for the shit. It just happens so much. And I'm just in such a weak mindset in my mental capacity right oh now. Oh my God, just... <laughs> I mean, just a weak mental capacity of the space and mind continuum, Star Trek and shit. You know, I'm just in this space of like negativity and this eyebrow is, oh my God, this eyebrow. Just paint. Does that even make sense to where I just can't really handle it right now. So I have so much to say, you guys, trust me. I have so oh, much I'm that sure I would like to do. say on about so many different things. But at this point in my life, I'm just kind of tired. But I've gotten to... She learned from love, man. Don't come after your haters, especially those ones on the snark forums, man. They don't mess around. She wants, you know, she wants to come out and be like, here's all the things you guys are wrong about. And she wants to so badly. It hurts her because she's so non-confrontational. Except no, she's super confrontational. And she, she feels like if she had the opportunity to come out and just set the record straight, she'd be like, there's so much wrong about all you guys say. And she wants to like, she, she thinks she's a snarker. Like she got some skills and she's like, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody and have a debate. Come on the show, Jess. Let's debate. The point where I'm really careful about what I talk about and how I talk about it. I've just had too many things blow up into something that it's not. You just get tired. Like what? Just say one thing. This is your personal channel, Jess. Say the one thing that got blown, blown up to what it's not. I, I, I think the, the Janelle situation for Jess Fam's world and the conversation with the teenagers is one of her biggest downfalls so far. And I think that's what she's alluding to. Maybe not the Janelle thing because... Unless she's like, well, I want to tell my side. And she sort of did. And then she threw Janelle's kid under the bus, right? But I think the teenager COVID thing really, really, really damaged her. And she feels like she's still in the right about that. The she's people not. twisting your words. And so it's like, for some things, it's just not even worth talking about anymore. The internet is good. It's working, everybody. It's working. It's seriously not the same place that it used to be. Like when I started, Agreed. the space was so positive. I no, 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 no. Let me correct you there. When I started, everybody thought family vlogging was totally cool and they weren't caught, they weren't catching on to the fact that it was exploitation of children and it was inappropriate. Now we're starting to see these kids come out and it's like being damaged and the internet's like, um, really mad about that or something? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like before it was so nice. Now they're so mean. Here's why Jess fam, because people open their eyes. People are seeing that exploitation of children is wrong. Again, this was going to be a natural progression of what happens because it's so new what you're doing. Now people are waking up to it and she's like, it's so mean now. No, it's not mean. People are just holding people accountable now. That's what happened. And you didn't pivot. You should have pivoted.
I've always had, you know, haters or like rude people. My whole, I mean, I, st I started as a teen mom on YouTube, guys. I ha I've had, I've had it all. I've seen it all in my real life and on my internet life. I've been there, done that, but the internet now is yellow, brutal. TikTok, oh, the people on TikTok are, they are mean. So I'm stuck somewhere. Yeah, but TikTok also has like stands who will go to bat for you even if you've like thrown your kid off a balcony. Well, the baby's fed, <laughs> so she's a, she's doing such a she's doing her best. Uh, she threw the kid off the balcony. Well, she's doing her best. Like, yes, there are some mean people on TikTok, but there's also like insane stands who are like will go to bat for you for anything that you do. In between not giving a flying f about what they're saying, like just you know whatever you can say what you want and just not sharing things. So I'm in, I'm somewhere in between, somewhere in between there. What was my initial point? My ADHD. By the way, you guys, I've recently discovered through you guys, actually, I've, I've talked about, I've talked about so many things, obviously on my vlog channel. If you don't follow us on, my, on our Oh, she going to draw the little uh, cat wings? Sing! Vlog channel. Go do that on Just Sam. But I've had so many people point out, and I cannot talk while I do this. I've had so many people point out oh. for so many different reasons that they think I show many signs of ADHD. <laughs> Think if you look up ADHD in the dictionary or in the medical journal of journals or go to university med school and be like, let's look at ADHD and the signs. And the professor turns on the projector. It's a picture of chess fam. Okay. I'm sorry. I have ADHD too. I, I, people who have ADD or ADHD know other people that can tell the signs are all really sick. Now there's been a huge wave of kids being diagnosed with it because we now know what it is. And yes, yeah, some people have it's on a spectrum for sure. She is like, me as far as ADHD because like I if I go off into a all fun another thought and it's gone the other one's gone forever so yeah <laughs> you think and so I've since done some research on ADHD and I've done a little bit because I do suspect one of my kids to have ADHD but I never thought of it for myself please don't diagnose your children if you're a parent take them to a professional please because storing your kids on medicine is not going to be the answer and I know I take medicine from ADHD I'm trying to get I'm actually trying to get it done with it because I've been doing a ton of research into these medicines on like Guys, it's not what you think. You shouldn't be throwing kids on medicine is what I'm saying, unless it's absolutely the only last option you have. So I'm just, I want to say that. So as a kid, I was diagnosed with OCD. Like I went to therapy. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. I used to do some like funky things. I used to do everything twice. So like if I would shut the microwave, I would shut it twice. And if I shut the door, I would shut it twice. If I said things, I would say it twice. I went through a phase where I would do everything twice. So I'm not sure OCD is a phase. And OCD is life altering. I don't know, man. That amongst some other things, um, I was actually diagnosed OCD. But okay. neither me nor my. She says she was. She was. And mom ever suspected me to have ADHD, but recently I have d described. That one's way thicker than the other one. It's lots of things on the internet and come across a lot of actually TikToks like about AD ADHD. No, no. Don't get on TikTok for any medical diagnosis whatsoever or listening to medical advice from people. There are people on TikTok, they're like, I have 16 personalities and here, here's one. Oh, hi, I'm Greg and I am the guy that takes care of the gardening in the brain. And hey, my name's Sally and I do all the pancake cooking. That's a lot. All that shit is a lie. None of them are. It's all for attention. Don't go on TikTok for anything for medic don't and go, go to any influencer for anything about medical things at all please can we just agree on that let's just go to a doctor please a professional who's been trained let's can we do that thanks don't listen to her and obviously i'm not diagnosed but i suspect that i actually do have adhd based on some TikToks. are you out of your mind and my point with this is that my brain like i can't physically like focus on one thing it's always just like I always describe it as having like a hundred tabs up at all times. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys, if anyone has experience with that, I'm just, I think, I think my ADHD shows through like projects I start and don't finish. But recently I've been finishing projects. That's good. Suspecting it at this point, but what was my point with that? No, there was no point. You're dumb. Exactly. Um, okay. Thank you. I'm going to stick to like a solid question. Oh, okay. A lot of people asking about my relationship with Richard. Um, Who's Richard? It's honestly good. Like it's honestly. Who the hell is Richard? It's fine. Both of us are such different people than we were, you know, 10 plus years ago. And as far as my relationship with him goes, oh, I got that in my eye. It's pretty much non-existent. Like we don't. We Who the hell is Richard? Is she talking about Drake? 
Is she used the word Richard for the word for Drake? Is that like the secret name? Hardly talk, like we'll talk about the kids once in a while. I'm actually taking the kids to go visit him on Friday. He just moved out of state, so I offered to like bring the kids to go see him. Well, you're such a saint. But I have always wanted, and anybody that knows me, anybody that knows me knows that I want my kids' dad to be in their life. You're a damned liar. You're a damned liar. We've seen it all. I, I, initially, she just wants them, you know, she's like, why doesn't he get to see them? I want them out. He's not seeing them. She wanted them to be like, she was so mad at the system for not taking away all his rights. So she's a damn liar. She throws them under the bus all the time. Like, I always have pushed for it. I've actually gotten lots of hate in the past. Um, not hate, but like feedback saying, why do you let their dad come in and out of their life? And he'll tell you himself, like, he has been in and out of their life. I do think he loves them. Like, I, I really do. And the reason is, is because I don't want my kids to ever feel like, because of what happened to me and my relationship with him, that I ever took that out on them. He's even told me to my face, like, thank you for, you know, putting up with me through these. Mm, thanks for being a saint, Jess. You're such a saint. I'm sure Drake thinks that. Years. I just want what's best for my kids, and I feel like no one really knows what... Do you want what's best for your kids, Jess? Because I've got some news for you. News slash news. What's best for your kids is not putting them on the internet. What's best for your kids is not giving away all their medical information, all their shit that goes down, periods, and breaking arms, and having tantrums, and getting hurt, um, giving away their privacy, where they live, where they go to school, where they go on vacation. You know what? That's not best for your kids. I even, even Jess would agree with me, and anybody who does this, that it is not best. They might not think it's such a big deal, but it's not best. Let's be real. This is not what's best for children to give away their entire privacy to make them semi celebrities. Making kids celebrities is not a good thing. I just finished uh, Jeanette McCurdy's book. And even in Hollywood, making kids celebrities is a terrible, terrible idea. OK, so, yes, you do not want what's best for your kids. You want what's best for you. What that is right like it's pretty much a shot in the dark for any decision that you have on your kids like should i do this or should i do this you don't really know you just it's not a shot in the what when you're making decisions for your kids it's not a shot in the dark what is she saying right now keep going and you keep going with what you think is right and what you feel is right and like the way that i was raised and i justify you know explaining my kids because i think it's right because we have money like i talked to you with that video she made where she's like my kids are on a 401k and they meet new people and have and have many adventures you always ignore the idea of informed consent and privacy you never talk about it jess so why don't you come out with a video and talk about your stance on your kids privacy and their futures Right? You're never going to talk about it. You know you won't. And how I want to raise my kids, I want I want to encourage them to always have a relationship with their dad. And he actually was getting better. Like, he was seeing them more often. But that aside, my relationship with him is fine. Like, we, we talk fine. We don't hardly talk at all. But when we do... That sounds like a good relationship. It's fine, but we, it's not fine. You know, it's fine, but we hate each other, you know? It's, it's just normal, right? Is that normal for everybody else? No, Jess, it's not normal. So stop saying stupid shit. It's pretty much good. I mean, it's... Don't get me wrong, like, there's been plenty of times where we just... Oh, I believe and you. And we definitely almost never see eye to eye, but I... S but you get along? What do you... <laughs> but we're okay. It's okay, though. Like, we never see eye to eye. We argue all the time. We fight and cuss. And we spit. And I, I tear them down on the internet. But it's fine, right? It's fine. It's all good. I think both of us have grown a lot in trying to at least be civil. So, oh, I mean, okay. yeah. We're civil. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. You could have just said that, right? How are you and your ex? We're civil. Thanks. Next question. Dumbass. Will Lilia ever do a solo for dance competition? She's actually doing it this year. This year she's doing her first solo and I'm very excited. She's grown so much over the years. So stay tuned for that. Huh. How fake are you? I am the fakest. I am just so... This makeup's fake. My eyeball... Yes, it is. Inherently. Makeup turns into someone you're not. That's fake. It's... I mean, it's good. It makes you feel good. That's cool. But it's still inherently fake. Right? Fake. Which is not necessarily a wrong thing. If I wanted to get fake hair, it would still be fake hair. Maybe you feel better, but it's fake. I paid for them. I actually did pay for my boobs twice. My stomach's fake. Twice? My whole life is just made up. It's actually like a... Your stomach is fake? What? Script. Um, we coordinate it. I have like a concept writer. The kids are fake. You do not have a concept writer. You're such a damn liar. <laughs> You know, you're like, ah, oh, we're filming going to Disney. Is that a concept writer? Okay. They're actually robots. Husband hired him. Friends definitely hired them. I take two AA batteries. How long did you breastfeed your kids? No, more like two double D batteries. Boom. Is there a double D battery? Oh, you jerk. 
did you breastfeed your kids individually? So why do people ask these questions? Who gives a shit how long you breastfed your kids for? What a dumb question. The kids, that's like 10 years ago. Oh, Lilia, I'm trying to remember because I have such a bad memory. That's part of the ADHD thing people were saying too, but my memory- Could be the drugs too, I don't know, or the alcohol. Bad. Lilia, I breastfed until about a year old, and the reason is because she started going to her dad's house every other weekend, so keeping up with like her breastfeeding past that was not ideal. So she weaned around one year and then I had the twins. I don't care. And stopped in the future. This was like several years ago. It's something that I did seriously think about at one time, but now I'm thinking, no, I'm adopting. I and Caden, so Caden was two and a half when he finally weaned. Landon must have been like six months old. So he was two and a half, and then Landon was two, and Addie was two, roughly, more or less. Then I hey. Would you ever seriously consider adopting? I have. Please don't. Please, please don't. Please don't. Thank you. That's. Thanks for joining my TED Talk. I've talked about this in the past. I've talked about my desire to potentially adopt in the future. This was like several years ago. It when Micah's thing was hitting hot spots, I was like, oh my God, yeah, she's doing it, I'm doing it. That's the only reason a family vlogger would adopt. I'm sorry. If you have your family on the internet and you're adopting, the only reason you're adopting is because it's good for your algorithm, it's good for money. Come at, I, I, come at me. And people would say, well, that's still better for those kids. And maybe it is. And you could be right about that, right? The kids are still maybe getting out of the situation that they're in, maybe. But if you are family vlogging and you're adopting, the only reason you did it, the only reason you're doing it is for money. So what I said. It's something that I did seriously think about at once. Until Micah's shit fell apart. In time, but now I'm thinking, no. Because no. I... that's too much work. I've learned a lot, especially these last few years. There's... Yeah, she did. I would probably turn out like Micah. There's a lot more that goes into adopting than just, you know, wanting to give a child a better home to live in. Oh, pause. Uh, you know what? Oh my God, Jess, fam, I can't be able to agree with you on something. Yes. Yes. There is so much more to adopting than giving a kid a better place to live. I can't believe I'm about to agree with Jess. You're damn right, Jess. You're right. And that goes, if you go to Crazy Middles, Crazy Pieces, Do Doherty does, and all these people who do it, there's so much more. But that's what their fans are like, look, the kids are in a better place. But they're really not in the end. Because there's so much more. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to agree with Jess fam. High five, Jess. Pfft, right on. Yes. Okay, there's, the, I, and I talk about this, the trauma and everything else. And just putting them on camera and giving them junk food is not a good way to take care of kids who have issues. And you have special needs and different needs and everything else. It is not a good thing. Putting them on camera and making them YouTube stars is a bad thing if they come from trauma. That's what I'm saying. It's not a good thing. It's the opposite of a good thing. So, shit. Jess fam gets a... Jess fam, you get one pineapple. Okay. Oh, hello? No? Yeah, you heard that? I know, I was agreeing with her. <laughs> I mean, even a broken clock is right. At least once a day. Twice, but once, you know? No. Yeah, okay, well. Fall's coming, I know you're getting ready for all your decorating and shit. It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> it's gonna be the same shit. Anyway, I hope you're, uh, you know, doing what you gotta do to stay safe and stuff, so. Yeah, you sound sad, I don't wanna really talk to you. Okay, okay, bye. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna call you later. Okay, bye. She's in a mood. Hello? On our way there, we're just stuck in traffic. I don't know if they're doing road work or what. Probably. It's so annoying. It's like noon. Why are you doing road work at noon? Oh my god, why are these people doing construction for their jobs to feed their families? I'm trying to get to Pan Express. Do they not know who I am? I know, right? Yeah, it should be good. All right? So, we can just do it fast. How close are you? Yeah, we End of blood eye, getting towards gold, but... Okay. I'll have Chris set the stuff up to be ready. Give me an number coming up to record the podcast right now. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Adopting. Um, so through the years, I've learned a lot more about it. And a lot of people have opened my eyes on it. And I just realized that although it's something I would love to do, I think realistically, um, it's probably not something that we will do. At least not. Thank God. Now in our lives. Don't what ever. What trips are you currently planning? So uh, we. If you say Disney. I don't know, do something. We have a trip planned in September that I'm so excited for. I'm not gonna say where that is quite yet. We know where it is, asshat. 
It's in Disney. And then we have another trip. I need to set up my curling iron, hold on. And then we have another trip planned in January. But other than that, um, we're gonna do Disneyland in October. We're gonna do Oogie Boogie, definitely, which I'm so- Okay, so <laughs> the trips that she has planned don't include Disney. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go do South Cruise. I'm gonna go here and then the but, the, but that's just the trips Then we're gonna do Disney here and Oogie Boogie and Halloween special Spectacular spookness and we're gonna go Christmas and Disney 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 doesn't count and don't forget everybody It's all written off as expenses because she vlogs it. So excited for but other than that I can't think of anything off the top of my head family wise do <laughs> Do you want another kid? Okay, no Please don't. I've never really experienced like baby fever because I've always had babies, right? And then after having Addy, it's just like, I'm babied out. Like, if Yeah. She's like, Addy's a plan B baby. Oh, she's planned, but plan B. I had so many babies. I will say this last few months, I've really felt the baby fever. Like if Chris was fertile, we probably would be having another right now. Thank and the Lord, Chris isn't fertile. Honestly, would. Like, there's no reason I couldn't have another baby. You know, we. Just don't though. We can afford another baby. We can house another baby if we really wanted can to. Can you? No, you can't. Like we could have another baby. I'm just gonna be totally honest with you guys. The only thing really stopping us is the fact that I had a tummy tuck. The pain oh. that I endured after having kids and I hate pregnancy. Like pregnancy is so hard on my body. Like. And Jess Fam says, ah, I hated it. But the reason she hated it is because of what it did to her body. It just sounded so superficial when she says that, right? People who are more worried about their body is what it's doing to their body than this. I just, I'm just saying it as like a thing. I might cut the whole shit out. I physically almost died having Addy. You guys know if you watch my birth video, I just don't think that my body can handle another pregnancy and birth. But that aside, had I not had the troubles that I had with Addy and had I not had a tummy tuck, I probably would be having another one. So, so if you have a tummy tuck, you cannot have another baby? Is that because it's like it'll pop the... Because your tummy is like, is your, is a tummy tuck generally like they cut off a bunch of the fat out and then they like, for, you know, glue it down so it's flat? Is that how it works? And if you get pregnant, you'd be stretching out scars? Is that how that works? Oh, I don't know. I guess you never know what the future holds. But at this point, Chris is not fertile unless a miracle happens, which does actually. His cousin had a vasectomy. Chris's cousin, his first cousin had a vasectomy and they just announced that they're pregnant again. So... Hey, if it happened, it happened, but I don't expect it to, and it shouldn't. He even got his stuff checked. Like, there should be no reason that we have Okay, to got it. I just said a hard no for so long, but these past few months, I, I just, I know. I was like, you know, I My views are down, and I gotta do something. I don't know what to do. I kind of would be down to have another one. And I also, I'm so young, too. Please don't. People You're not... Uh, 30. Please would tell me this, like, you're gonna change your mind when you're older. And I was like, I am not. Like, I promise you, I'm not gonna change my mind. But I also am so young. Part of me hopes that I don't regret. I don't think you're as young as you think you are, though. Him getting a vasectomy when our kids are, you know, like a little bit older. Well, they are getting older. Like, Addie's about to be sick. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, you guys. I don't even know anymore. You think you know what, what you're. I don't think she's good at this thing with the curling. You're doing with your life, and, and then you don't. I love this. You're gonna get thousands of questions about you and Richard. So, how are Gabe and Chris? I love this. Gabe is. Gabe, he's hanging in there. I'll let him answer for himself. I don't want to speak for him, but as far as I'm concerned, he's good. He's well. Chris is... I wonder if he would come in here. Let me ask him if he'll come in here. All right, ask him for yourself. How are you? How am I? How are you? Like, Well, that was great, and I was playing Fortnite until you came and got my ass. I was doing well. I was in, I was playing. I was in top 10 or whatever, shooting head guys in the head and shut. And then, because my life... How are you? <laughs> This guy plays video games all day long. What do you mean, how are you? Hell yeah, that's the life. In any way, shape, or form. I hate this. I, I mean, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so good. Yeah, I, you better be. Literally doesn't work. Play video games all day long and edits a podcast. That's the damn life. Hell yeah. I'd be good too. Who's concerned about me? Chris is we good. all are. Good. Like as far as our relationship goes, I think we are potentially stronger than we've ever been. Like we've seen some stuff in our years. Yeah, you have. Janelle intensifies. You've done some stuff. Done some stuff. 
We're very good, I think, at communicating with each other. We're very like open with each other about how we're feeling, when we're feeling it. Chris and I actually went to marriage counseling for quite some time. Maybe like, shoot, how long have we been together? I guess we've been together for almost eight years now. We actually went to marriage counseling a few years back and learned a lot about each other and about how to communicate with each other how to talk to each other no matter how perfect any relationship comes across on the internet trust me like we all have our struggles we are not perfect by any means like there's been times where i threatened to leave him like we've had hardships but we have really grown a lot in our relationship which i hope that's you know i hope that's how everybody is is that you live and you learn and you grow chris and you know make out with my best friend without her consent and stuff it's just it is you know it doesn't everybody go through that type of thing no nobody else does and I didn't know each other for very long before we got married, which, oh, looking, back, which looking back was a really bad decision. Back is kind of like, dang, that was fast. But dang, could, that was stupid is what you meant to say. I did not see myself with any other person. Not to sound cliche, but I did not believe in the whole soulmates thing until I met him. And as much as we piss each other off sometimes, I'd say there's pretty much nothing that we can't work through. We just love each other too much and we are very in it for each other. What has Mimi been up to? Mimi is... <laughs> the best person on this planet. If you don't know who Mimi is, she is my mom. She and my dad obviously both live with us. She is the greatest person to- Because I get to go to Disney with the girls and go party on the weekends in Nashville while my mom watches the kids because Chris isn't gonna watch them. He's got video games to play. Ever walk the planet. She is living her best life at this point. She retired from being a teacher, as you guys know, so she just stays home with me. She helps me with the kids. Her like goal in life is to like take the kids and give them experiences so she'll- that's what you said this whole thing was. All the experiences they get. It's her goal to get them off the internet, maybe. Take turns having a few of the kids at a time. Oh, it is getting so hot in here. But as far as... You have an iron on. That could be it. What she's been up to, she has her mountain house that she goes up to. But during the week, for the most part, she's here with us and she helps us like take the kids places. There's a lot of times where we have to be... So you don't parent your own kids? That's cool several places at once like multiple times a week we have to be at least three places at once and so because she's home we're able to put our kids in so many more like activities that they want to do because if there's only two of us at home we would not be able to get everyone where they needed to be she's just great she's amazing what is your favorite color besides yellow i would say blue or green how is custody good both colors <laughs> Work. going do you think it's gotten easier or harder as they grow up i would say it depends on the person um with gabe it's definitely gotten easier like so much easier and i would say actually in general custody is easier as the kids grow up because they if you have good parents anyway like you pretty much let them decide what they want to do you know where they want to be how long they want to stay there within reason of course i don't know it's like so hard to explain because it's so dependent on each and every situation but overall easier so easier so like with me and gabe obviously this, again, this isn't a flex that you think it is. You know, I have so many different kids and so many different dads that it's just like so many different ways we can do different things. That's not good, everybody. I don't know what you're, I know you're trying to make the best of a situation. That's not good. And, and I know that's their normal, but these kids have brothers and sisters on the outside as well and in here, and then they want to go somewhere for a few weeks and this, it's going to be a big discombobulated mess when they get older. This isn't smart. These are relationships that can be fractured and are like, could be, I don't know. I just, I feel like, oh, it's not, ew, it made me feel icky. You know, we're great. It's almost always been great though. There was only like a few short years where there was like trouble with us. And I would say there wasn't even really trouble with us. It was just like, we didn't really talk to each other very much, but oh my his God. relationship with Lillian was always good. With the boys' dad, I would definitely say that it's gotten better as they've gotten older for so many reasons. I think that he and I have both grown up. Oh my God, fast forward. To Tommy and Kaden out of respect for their mom. The stepmom that got involved speak about custody things in regards to Tommy and Kaden out of oh. respect for their mom. I wouldn't say there's beef between us. Out of respect, eh? At least that I know of. Anything that has to do with them and their custody stuff, I 100% stay out of it. Well then, okay. But you're their mom. You always say you're mom to seven. But everything, all the parenting decisions and everything else, you stay out of it? That doesn't sound very momming to me. You 100, because I'm out of respect for her. I don't think so. I honestly believe that that woman and knows more about Chris and everything. Obviously, she does. And more about this type of situation. And then she wants, I know she doesn't want those kids on the internet.
and they have their own issues like for sure but i do not want to be like the stepmom that got involved i don't want to step on anybody's toes especially like i will only say i'm their mother on my videos but when it comes to actually making parenting decisions i don't get to make any decisions so no you don't get to say that then you don't you're not you literally are not their parent you are the stepmom like the evil stepmom you know their family any issues that they may have i completely stay out of it i stay neutral on all sides there's okay. obviously times where chris will come to me and you know ask my opinion on stuff i think it's fair to say that they struggle getting along but i truly stay neutral i just try to support him but i also many times defend like her stance on it too because being a mom myself like sure being, you do. being the baby mama i often see both sides of it so if it's brought to me i'll like give my opinion to him but i stay out of it i don't make any decisions i let everything fall in their court pretty telling i think the reason i do that is because that's what my is because we got in huge fights before about them being on the camera and this is the only way to stay neutral so she kids can stay in the camera. My stepdad did in our in my in my life, and I feel like he did it right. Like he never got involved. His role in my life was to just be there and love me and support me. He didn't discipline me. He didn't overstep. He never like talked bad about anybody in my family. So I think I had a really good role model of a stepdad growing up, and that's kind of the role that I take on in my stepkids' life. Is I only want to be there to support them and love them and care for them. I pretty much don't discipline them. I only just want to be there to I only want to use them as saying I have seven kids. We got it. Got it. Love them and support them and care for them. But in general, I think as far as custody goes, I personally feel like as the kids get older, it gets easier just because that communication is less between the parents and more so between like the child and the parent as far as like wants, desires, feelings. Oh my god. You know, as the kids have gotten older, it's I just again, this this just this just talk about whatever they want to talk about and then I will edit as I see fit but what I've allowed on the internet is you know as the kids have gotten older it's a lot of a lot I've been on the internet for you feel like you know you're like mama bear like you're, you're you have to be more protective which I still am like very protective but I don't know I, I hope that makes sense how do you decide what to share on the in, on the internet versus not share I don't know I <laughs> I just share it all because it's gonna get me clicks and money I'll share it She's being honest here, at least. I don't know. Guys, she shares everything on the internet. We know more about her carnally than you'd know about anybody else in the world. Sexual escapades, partying, drinking. She does, would you, have, never have I evers. We know more about her and her children than you would, should you probably even know about your own damn extended family. That's crazy. She has no boundaries, no filter learned a lot i've been on the internet for almost 13 years this year will be 13 years and i think i've just learned through trial and error and you know as the kids have gotten older it's a lot of what they want and my kids are they love the camera they love to share everything. they love they love they love i gotta say they love it so that the you know, everybody else call me out they, they love it yeah they don't because we know that caden doesn't want to be on the camera anymore right they don't love this shit. they don't love it they love who you are when the camera's on everything too much even so luckily i know the editor it's myself i just kind of let them vlog and talk about whatever they want to talk about and then i will edit as i see fit but what i've allowed on the internet is so different than what i used to allow on the internet but like i said the internet's just changed so much and i don't really know how i determine it i just again you don't this, this just this just goes back to like trying my best i'll ask opinions of people around me i definitely share things in the what? past that Ooh. i wish i hadn't but you live and you learn and you know I, <laughs> you know i live and learn it's just their privacy it's just you know, this is it guys listen to this there's things i've shared in the past i wish i hadn't but has she gone and deleted any of that stuff nope not at all she doesn't care she's a liar live and learn i guess <laughs> make the mistakes with your kids but just you know it is what it is again just trying your best are you still friends with your youtube friends um the friends question you guys always gets me i think it's so silly because <laughs> i gotta like you know it's a simple answer no but here i, I this one gets me because i am um, have no friends people think that if they don't see it in your video it didn't happen and that is just so far from the truth like i've obviously had falling outs with friends you're a fake like everybody has. she's like <laughs> it's just you know <laughs> when you laugh off a question that's this serious no one believes you. We all can think of a few, right? But just because you don't see someone in my videos does not mean that we're not friends anymore. I promise you. Any YouTube friend that I can think of, yes, I'm still friends with. Like, I can't think of anybody that I'm not friends with anymore. But that doesn't mean that, like, I see you. Notice her cadence changes when she's lying. 
right? When she doesn't, she's uncomfortable with this question. She starts getting manic a little bit about the way she answers the question. You know, you know, it's all good. Just kidding. You know, they're not friends. We're not friends. We're totally friends. No, no, no. You know, I've gotten phone calls from people who just fam thinks they're her friends. Okay, I've gotten phone calls from them. Okay, she's a damned liar. Jess burns every bridge in her life. And those people that say they're her friends might say that to her, but don't really talk to her because they don't want the wrath of Jess fam in their life. That's why. Okay, she's <laughs> she's just the, everything changed. You can now I can totally tell when Jess fam is lying now. Them every day either. I have seven kids, a full life, and all of now she says seven. the people that I value in my life also are like highly successful people who have full lives of their own. So we just see each other when we can. Like I'll go months without, even years without seeing friends sometimes. Like my friend, my friend Courtney, she was my maid of honor at my wedding, and I see her probably once a year, if that. And when we see each other, it's just like nothing ever happened. And you, you guys would have no idea if we're friends or not. Like I don't okay. vlog it. I don't vlog every day, and I definitely don't vlog every second of every day. The time spent on camera just does not. Signify how so if you are you just saying so what you guys see is completely fake is what she just said there they, they have a really hard time with this she just said it to you everything i show you is fake but they can't actually say the words which is why I just tell the damn truth. You have to ask, are you and so-and-so still friends? Chances are probably yes with a few exceptions obviously but <laughs> yeah you know you know with a few except all the exceptions that's what we're saying you don't have any friends left, Jess. For the most part, yeah. Like, I still am cool with everyone. Do you think you will ever move again? I always say no. I always say no, I don't think I'm going to move again. Like, that's always what I said. But all the times that I said I wasn't going to move again, I always ended up moving again. So I don't even know at this point. We obviously moved here. We're just trying our best. I love where we live. I would never move, move. Sorry, my camera died. What was I saying? Do I ever think I'll move again? I have no clue. Like, Why do you I cut the other shit out? I would say no, and now I just, I don't know. Maybe. I might. I don't think I'll ever move, move. Like, out of where where we live like this oh my live, god live but as far as houses goes i don't know i could would you start an only fans no no thank so. the lord i mean does it really matter you literally told everyone you do anyway same thing sorry guys i see a few people asking why they don't see one kid in my videos as much anymore i touched on this a little bit on instagram but my kids have full control over how much they want to be on camera and no they don't this is actually a this is a damn lie janelle who literally was at their house every day for years, helping clean, behind the scenes. She, go watch the video. Jess fam never asks her kids for permission to put them on camera ever. So there's never a, there's never an opportunity for them to not say it because she goes up and edits them. Those kids don't see that shit. The kids barely probably even see what they what, what is about them on the internet. The kids don't watch the videos, okay? These kids don't know what's out there about them because Jess doesn't tell them or ask them. So she is a liar right here. But if a kid's having a bad day or whatever, I'm sure she's like, okay, you don't have to, put, you don't have to be in this scene. Then maybe that's what she means. But there's just no damn way. She's such a liar. Conversation that we have in our family pretty often. We physically sit down with our kids and we talk about things. We talk about money. We talk about within age appropriately we talk about money we talk about friends we talk about like I, I feel like i have very good communication with my kids we talk about all kinds of things and one thing that we talk about somewhat pretty often is being in videos how you guys feel about it how is it going what she's such a damned liar again she only has to address these things because the pressure is on now for these types of content creators to stop exploiting their children that's the only reason she's sitting here saying this right now she doesn't do that she's a liar your thoughts on it do you have any questions every single one of my kids knows that if they she looks like she's reading off a piece of paper ever decided that they didn't want to be on camera for whatever reason no matter what the age is if they wanted me to delete a video if they wanted me to do anything my kids have full control over how much and how often they want to be in this look this sounds scripted does it not out of all the other things this is the scripted line this is crazy video some of the kids are like nuts they want to be center of attention all the time little but little do they know that that's where i'm supposed to be you're in my universe i'm the center of the attention of me okay he's like that he just always wants all the attention on him with everything filmed. she's he's reading about everything all the time that's just his personality whereas other kids prefer to stay in the background they don't want to be the center of attention in life in general right There's again lying look at the cadence the way she's speaking this is a lie you're so easy, Jess. Some people who just like the attention and there's some people that just don't. All of my kids are different. All of my kids are their own people and they all have- Listen, listen to the way she's saying this. Straight up, she's like having a panic attack. Their own opinion. I have open conversations with all seven of my kids and it changed- Five. Just day to day, just because, you know, there's one kid that's not in, the, not in a video a lot that one day, they could just be having a bad day. I have bad days. Sometimes I don't want to vlog either, so I just won't. My kids- 
they're human and they all have those days too. So there's some videos where you won't see my kids at all. Imagine this conversation. It's such a weird conversation. At its core, it's the weirdest conversation. You know, my kids didn't want to be in a video. They didn't have to be in a video. Like, this is the conversation you're having about your kids with strangers. Well, they don't want to be in a video. Like, this should never even be a conversation. You know, they're in videos and they don't want to be in videos. That's not even a conversation. You shouldn't be having this. Your kids shouldn't be in the videos. The end. Dumbass. And there's some videos where you'll see all of them. There's more to it. I could keep talking about it. But no. That's just like, you know, you're, just you're it. lying. Which birth was the most painful? Don't care. Stasis. I had physical pain. Ended. And after having my tummy tuck and them fixing my muscles and repairing all of that, I that pain is gone. It's completely gone. So let's go ahead and show you this. I feel. God, I'm interested. I'm interested in this. This and. Oh my gosh, like five years. Oh no, I guess not really, huh? I probably did it after I had my. So here's what my scar looks like. You can kind of see this is this is not a scar. That's just from sitting. But this is my scar. Holy shit, they go all the way around. You can see it comes back here. If you don't remember, I actually had it. I had it extended. It's like the scar goes along where like underwear go. Two year, two years ago, I think. To take off this. Pretty good looking scar though. Um, my tattoo that I had right here. I have noticed. Is it Drake or something? <laughs> that there's times where my scar is darker than others. It, see, it also was around, this is again for my pants, but you can see the scar right there. Oh, they take it out of your belly button? I, I noticed that there's times where my scar is darker than other times. When well, it's because your skin is translucent, so I guess, yeah. When I'm in hot water, it'll be red. If I drink, it'll be red. Like, my scars will be more pink. It's like a... It's like a mood ring when you drink your scars turn different colors and if i'm cold i think that's also when my scars are like more so any change of any type whatsoever is when your scars change colors got it apparent like you can see them more but for the most part they have healed so nicely people who don't know like i'll mention that i had a tummy tuck and they'll be like where like i don't <laughs> Okay. You can see it. Obviously, you can see it, but you know, typically, if you're just like wearing a swimsuit, any kind of swimsuit, my surgeon did such a good job at the location of like how he cut it, and I don't know, he just he was so amazing. Okay, was couple tidbits in there though. But the one thing Jess Sam keeps talking about is this whole thing with the kids and consent and everything else. She tries, she won't elude, she won't answer the hard questions though. You know, what about their futures, Jess? What about what's gonna? Have you ever given any thought to what this, how this is gonna affect their future? You know, the things that you have on the internet specifically about yourself, do you not think that that's going to affect your children? Do you, and have you thought about it? And you know she has. What are your thoughts on that? She will never answer that question because I think Jessica knows that that's going to be detrimental to her children. Her kids are going to resent the shit out of her when they get older. They're, they're, if not, it's already starting to start probably, specifically the boys. Right? Lily wants to be her mom and she wants to vlog and do all this stuff because she sees that and maybe she will. The boys will resent the shit out of their parent, of their mother, a hundred percent, like a hundred percent. I will be surprised that in a few years, when the boys get to choose who they want to live with, that they stay here. I, I, you know, because at some point, having everything, going on vacations and getting bikes and all the expensive shit, it's if you've gotten that your whole life, it doesn't matter. You're not, you don't know what you're actually gonna miss, except you're you're gonna want to change the way. Because again, these kids are gonna be bullied, like insane bullied when they get into high school. With the shit that the internet knows about their mom, it's gonna be crazy for these kids. I feel so bad. They know every, again, everybody knows everything about these children. And Jess Fam's kids are wild and, you know, free range and everything else, and they seem like cool kids. But they also seem like they might have behavioral issues because they haven't been parented properly, right? These kids likely are terrorizers, right? You know those kids who have free range parents who don't really give a shit what their kids do and their kids can do no wrong and everything else? That's Jess Fam. And it's not the kid's fault. But those kids are going to be like that. And those kids are going to have a lot of enemies. And all those kids' enemies are going to have to do is look on the internet for five minutes. And they've got all the shit they're going to need to have to come back with these kids and bully them. That's it. At its core, Jess Fam isn't the worst of them all. She has done some crazy shit. And she's a bad parent. But she's not the worst of them all. But from what the content that she has on the internet is only going to serve to hurt her children. So there you go. And I did the Q&A. There's a lot of curls and the eyelashes and shit. Everybody take a deep breath. It's good to be home in my own bed with my fluffy ass covers. Man, what a difference it makes to be in your own bed. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, I want you guys to know that I think you're amazing. And I thank you for being here. And couldn't be doing this without you. And I love that we have these conversations. And we have some tough conversations that we have. Um, but we have some fun ones too. And we keep talking about it because it's fun. 
and it's important. I think it's really important. Protect the kids around you. Don't forget how valuable and amazing you are. And you look so good in those uh, Lulu tights. Nice. I'll see you tomorrow.